Hello everybody! In today's video, we're going to be taking a detailed look at Bachmann's G-Scale Toby from the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe. Toby is a brown tram engine who wears the number 7. Toby works the Northwestern Railway. Originally, Toby operated on a tram line in the north of the island of Sodor, but progress would put an end to that as the trams gradually became obsolete in favor of lorries to move goods and buses and cars to move human passengers. By the way, a lorry is simply a British word for truck, in case you weren't aware. Anyway, as a result of all this progress in the transportation industry, Toby's line shut down. At that point, Toby thought he was done working as a tram, but as luck would have it, he was summoned by the Fat Controller to work the Northwestern Railway and soon went to work on Thomas's branch line. Oh, and he brought Henrietta with him. There's a lot to learn about Toby and there are plenty of sources online if you're interested in learning more. He does seem to have a long history in the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe. Like all rolling stock and locomotives in the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe, Toby is based on a real-life tram. He's based on the GER class C53 slash LNERJ70 tram engine. These tram engines are 060 steam engines. The GER class C53s were designed by a man named James Holden for the Great Eastern Railway, hence the GER and GER class C53. Now, in past videos, we've mentioned something called the Railways Act 1921, also informally known as the grouping. This is when all the railways in Great Britain were consolidated into four operators. It was at this point that the 12 GER Class C53 tram engines that were manufactured were transferred over to the London and North Eastern Railway and given the designation LNERJ70. As I just mentioned, there were 12 of these tram engines manufactured between 1903 and 1921, and all were withdrawn between 1942 and 1955, and all were scrapped. Okay, let's take a closer look at Bachmann's G-Scale Toby the Tram Engine from the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe. Now, uh, Toby is about 14 inches from coupler tip to coupler tip. And uh, as you can see, his primary color is brown. So he's got this kind of wood plank siding here. And the way they orient it here, it almost looks like clabber. It's like the side of a house, <laughs> really. Um, so you get that lighter color uh, uh, plank siding here. And then you've got the darker wood framing here that kind of frames out the walls and the windows and then these uh, door frames here. And then, of course, Toby wears the number seven there in this uh, kind of familiar yellow um, number here with the red outline. So, Toby number seven. Uh, you'll see here that there is uh, that there's this gray skirting down here, and then you'll see that there's some little step ups here that step into this kind of it's a fake doorway here. You can see that it's. Um, uh, kind of plastic, black plastic covered here. You can see these little um, brass painted handrails. Now you can't step into this door. It's just a kind of a plastic um, uh, plastic sheet here uh, that does that. And that's on all four corners. So these two uh, doorways and then the two on the opposite side. Let's get these little step ups here. Um, again, the windows here also have that black uh, plastic there. Um, to kind of emulate windows. You can't see in there or anything like that. And I imagine that in these real life uh, tram engines, you would step up and walk right into kind of like a little veranda or, um, you know, kind of like a little porchy section there uh, before walking into the, um, into the tram itself. He's got a slightly curved roof here. And then on this side, you can see this bell feature. So you can see the little bell cable Kind of going along the top into each end of the um, tram and then the bell feature right there on the top of the roof and then we'll probably get a better view of it on the other side but you can see that there is a little chimney there uh, presumably that is the smokestack for the um or the funnel for the steam engine that's inside of this tram engine all right let's give it a quick turn All right, looking straight into the back end here, you can see the 
um, hook and loop coupler here. These are really large hook and loop couplers, and that's the way it is on all of these uh, Bachman G scale Thomas the Tank Engine, Friends Universe, Rolling Stock, or um, locomotives. Um, but working from the bottom here, you've got this kind of grilled, again, that skirting kind of continues around here. Um, it comes down to the track here. Um, you've got your buffer, your buffer beam in red with the black painted um, buffer pads. You've got a utility hook, <clears throat> and then that kind of uh, planking here kind of carries around the back. Um, then you've got the framing around the windows and that darker brown. This is all plastic construction, by the way. Um, and then you've got the framing kind of all around here. And then you can see that, uh, get a sense of how arched that roof is right there. And then you've got the back um, lamp or lantern here. Uh, this is a raised feature. Um, it's got a white plastic um, casing here with the red lens there on the back. But again, not functioning. It's all um, plastic more for a detailed effect than it is a functional light. And then you get these two little details right here on either side. I'm not exactly sure what those would be in real life, but, um, but there you go. All right, let's give it another turn. Toby's one of our favorite engines or locomotives in the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe. We did a HO scale um, review of Toby uh, a while back, so you can check that video out to uh, get a comparison of uh, um, the HO scale versus this G scale here. But I think as we said in that video, Toby's like one of our favorites. He's the most really kind of interesting um, locomotive, I think, uh, that there is to look at. Um, you know, there's just so many elements here to appreciate on, on Toby. But um, at any rate, here, this side is the exact same opposite of the opposite side, except for the bell feature, which you can see is, is over here. Um, that chimney's almost kind of in the center of the, uh, of the roof there. Again, number seven on this side, step ups on that skirting. And then the two entryways, kind of fake entryways again, that's just black plastic there. But you got these nice brass uh, painted handholds there, railings uh, to step up into the um, engine or tram. And then two windows. So yeah, not too much to add over here. It's the exact same as the opposite side. So let's uh, give it another turn. And here we're looking at the front of Toby, as you might be able to tell from his uh, face feature here. That's the most prominent feature here on the front of this uh, locomotive. Again, you get the hook and loop coupler, buffer beam, this uh, grilled um, skirting down here um, in the front. And then you've got a couple of windows uh, kind of above and uh, to the sides of his uh, face. And then again, those two kind of detailed um, things over here, these black painted little uh, things. Maybe they're a place flag. Maybe they're like little flag holders or something like that. Um, if they wanted to display flags on a holiday or some other special event. And then above Toby's face, you've got the front facing lamp or lantern. Now, again, this is not a functioning lantern, but you can see it's got the housing and then it's got a silver painted lens versus a red painted uh, lens on the back. Got the nice curve of the roof here. And then of course, Toby's wonderful face here. Now these eyes uh, traverse back and forth when uh, Toby is running out on the layout, which you'll see uh, in just a few minutes. Um, and then maybe from this angle, you can see again, that kind of chimney in the center of the roof there. You'll get a better view of that when we look at the, uh, at the top view. But at any rate, there is the front of Toby the tram and uh, his, nice, uh, his nice face there. So let's give it one final turn. All right, let's take a look at the top and the bottom. Okay, looking at the top of Toby here, this is just a smooth plastic, um, again, arched or curved uh, roof there. 
and then the uh, three features that you'll see on the roof. There's no other detailing in the roof. There's no like rivet uh, uh, detail or bolt detail or panels or anything like that um, on the gray part of the roof itself. But um, you do have these three other details, which is the bell um, system here, as we uh, showed earlier. This is not functioning. This is just purely decorative, but you can see the cable running to the bell in the center. Um, and then the cable then uh, continuing up to the front of the car or the front of the engine. And then you've got your um, chimney here, which presumably is the um, is the chimney stack for the steam engine that's inside. And then you've got this kind of diagonal thing here. Again, not really quite sure what that would be for in real life. If somebody in the comments wants to uh, leave a comment as to what that's for, what that's for, um, please do. We're always looking to learn more about our subject matter here. Um, but it is kind of a diagonally uh, placed. Um, little detail up there on the roof yeah so there is a look at uh, Toby's roof let's take a look at the bottom okay so looking at the underside of Toby here you can see all of the uh, drive wheels here are recessed under that skirting that we looked at um, when we were looking at uh, Toby from the sides and the ends there so the first thing you'll see here is the big, um, you know, kind of the motor casing here for the uh, drive wheels. And the motor casing there has some access screws in case you have to get in there and perform any kind of maintenance or anything like that. And you'll notice here also that the drive wheels are all uh, metal. So um, ob obviously that's for a connectivity on the track. Um, but one interesting thing here is that on a lot of these Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends Universe locomotives, especially the ones that have the six drive wheels, like this one here has the six, the middle one on some of the other locomotives don't have a flange. The, um, the middle wheel is just flat. Um, this uh, on Toby here, he has a flange on his middle wheels. Now that doesn't have, you know, there's no impact on performance or anything like that. It's pretty inconsequential to the actual uh, performance of the locomotive, but it is kind of an interesting uh, little detail there. So uh, otherwise you can just see the inside here of the coupler works here. Um, you can see kind of the center, the return spring here, like when you turn a coupler, you know, these uh, little uh, loopy looking, um, things there return the um, the hook part of the hook and loop coupler back to center um, and then you can see here there's like a little lever uh, to make the the coupler let me see get a better view of that um, can makes the hook part go up and down I'm sure most of you are kind of familiar with that operation but there's also an access screw down here in case you want to change out that coupler um, for something else I think a lot of people I think um, switch out the hook and loop couplers for knuckle couplers uh, more for I think realism and all that we've always been happy with the hook and loop couplers we don't change them out there they're fine for us um, the only other real thing of note here um, is that you've got your Bachman stamping right here as with all of the um, Bachman uh, G scale locomotives they all have that Bachman stamping um, and even the other scales have it as well and then you've got that little part number under there the part number is upside down. The Bachman logo is actually in its right orientation. Uh, typically they face the same direction, but in this case uh, they don't. But that uh, white part number is pretty typical also of these. Um, and then over here on the uh, bottom right hand uh, corner, there's a polarity switch there. Um, and the settings are large scale and standard. And uh, this was set to large scale by default. We've always left it on large scale and it uh, performs out on our garden railway uh, just fine. So we've ne never had a reason to, to turn that switch or to, flip, or to slide that switch on the standard side. I'm not even sure what will happen if you do it, but um, yeah, so we leave it on large scale and that uh, works good for the garden railroad. So anyway, there is a look at the bottom of Toby. Um, yeah, let's put him on the track and just give him one more spin.
All right, and just for fun, we thought we would uh, put our HO scale Toby right beside our G scale Toby, uh, just to give you a look at the uh, difference in scale here. Now, one thing I really like about these Bachman models is that they're very um, consistent um, from scale to scale. So there's a lot of the same uh, level of detail here on the HO as the G scale. They look very, very similar. Um, the only real difference is that um, uh, well, there's a few differences, but the real main differences that I can point out is that the lamps on the front and the back of the HO scale Toby have a yellow lens, while, as we pointed out earlier, the lamps on the front and back of the G scale Toby have a, has a silver painted lens in the front and a red painted lens in the back. Um, really super inconsequential here, I think. But um, yeah, otherwise, I've, aside from some color differences like the gray hook here and the black hook here, um, and also uh, the uh, the grilling up here on the front uh, is actually true grilling here. There's gaps in between each um, you know each part each uh, uh, um, vertical piece of the grill. Um, the grilling on the HO scale is just one solid piece of plastic that just has kind of like raised um, vertical um, pieces for the grill, so you can't really see through the the individual. Um, grill elements but uh, you can hear that's but again it's a smaller scale I think I would kind of expect that um, but yeah no that's uh it's uh, really Bachman is very consistent oh and the eyes traverse back and forth on the uh, Toby HO scale like they do on the garden uh, scale now they have an end scale version of Toby too um, we haven't bought it yet um, we probably will eventually just to kind of keep our collection complete but um, yeah, we'll, we'll pick that up, but we've showed you before in other locomotives the uh, G-scale, the HO scale, and the N-scale side-by-side. Side. And again, Bachman's is really good, I think, about um, kind of recreating you know, the, the details um, no matter what scale you're looking at. I think on the N-scale, um, the eyes don't traverse. On the, they don't on like the Thomas um, and some of the other, uh, the, the Percy. Um, those G scale, uh, those N scale ones, the eyes don't traverse back and forth like they do on the HO versions and the G scale versions. But again, that's probably just a matter of size, um, size limitations. But anyway, there you go. There's a look at uh, Toby and G scale and HO scale. And uh, yeah, so let's go take a look at the, quickly take a look at the rolling stock that Toby is going to haul on the, uh, on the run out on the Garden Railroad. So we have two Bachman G-Scale Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends Universe box vans that we haven't reviewed yet. So we figured that we'll have Toby haul these out on the uh, Garden Railway and uh, we'll give them a quick review before he takes them out. So um, what we have here is the GW or Great Western, um, just a straight up uh, generic box van here on the uh, left here. And then we have the Sodor Fruit and Vegetable Company box van on the right. So uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at each one individually, and then we'll take them out on the Garden Railway for a run with Toby. So we've done a number of reviews on these uh, Bachman G-Scale Thomas the Tank Engine or Friends Universe box vans. Um, so we probably don't have to spend a ton of time on, on either one of these, but we'll take a close look at the Sodor Fruit and Vegetable Company box van and just know that when we um, go to the more generic uh, GW box van. It's the same mold, um, the same construction and all that. So we'll just give that one a spin just so you get to see it on all sides. But we'll start here with again with the Sodor Fruit and Vegetable Company. Uh, the first thing you'll, I think you'll notice here is just this beautiful green, uh, uh, green color here. It's just a kind of a fantastic, a deep green, and it contrasts nicely with the gray uh, roof here. So uh, just real quickly here from the side, you'll see that there's this nice corner bracing here. A lot of uh, bolt work um, on these corner bracings on both sides. Really nice. It's got the, um, you know, the wood planking uh, for the sides here. And then it's got this nice sliding door. This is a non-functional door. This is just kind of stamped molded into the plastic, um, but this kind of sliding door here with some brass painted hardware. And then you've got these nice corner, again, corner bracings and these um, uh, bracings for the cross, um, uh, for the cross support here. Um, yeah, just really nice. You can see the door frame there and then the planking. And then of course the uh, Sodor Fruit and Vegetable Company logo there right on the side of the door. So all the colors together, it's just a great, um, again, great contrasting colors. They all go great together. Um, then down here below on the um, 
On the undercarriage here, you've got the trucks with the leaf springs and the brake mechanisms down here, which is always some, some great detail. And then from the side here on the profile, you should be able to see the, again, the big hook and loop couplers here. So, um, oh, and then from, uh, we'll look at it from the top, but there's also this kind of curved uh, door, uh, kind of gutter to keep rain from, you know, getting on the workers in the door, um, supposedly. So um, that's always a good detail. You'll see that from the top, but um, yeah, let's give it a quick spin. Yeah, so looking from the back end here, you can see that it's got the uh, black uh, buffer beam here uh, with the buffers. Everything's all painted in black here. Um, you've got the utility hook, again, that hook and loop coupler. And you can see the curve of the roof here in the back and then these um, horizontal um, uh, elements here in the, back of the, in the back of the van. And then this kind of downward facing, what looks to me like a um, you know, ventilation duct, um, you know, to keep the car air moving in the car. So, um, yeah, so just to give you a little look at the end here. So, uh, yeah, let's give it another turn. And this side of the car is the exact uh, same as the opposite side that we just looked at. So there's not, there's no new, uh, there's no new features to dive into here. Uh, but just to give you a look, so we'll continue turning. And again on this end, the exact opposite. Um, as the opposite end, you've got that um, ventilation duct up here and then those uh, horizontal uh, bracing features there. So um, yeah, let's bring it around full circle and then take a look at the top and the bottom. All these box vans are so nice. They have such an old school, um, you know, kind of British Railways look to them. So we really enjoy them quite a bit. Um, all right, let's take a look at the top. Okay, not too much to see up here on the top. Again, you saw the curve of the roof um, looking down the end uh, from the end perspective there, but this is just kind of a smooth gray plastic roof. And again, you can see those gutters on either side um, that keep rain from dripping on the workers as they're working in the doors of these uh, box vans. But uh, yeah, other than that, there's not, there's no other detail to speak of there on the on the roof. There's no bolt work or anything like that. All right, let's take a look at the bottom. Okay, looking from the bottom here, um, there's uh, the wheels are metal. Um, there's no connectivity here. There's no functionality to speak of on these cars here. But the metal wheels do give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of heft, and also they just sound great on the rails when it's um, going around the layout. Um, and you can see here the coupler, uh, all the coupler details here. Um, you've got this little uh, uh, thing here that moves the, as with the Toby um, steam uh, tram, you, uh, you know, you've got the coupler has a little lever there to uh, release them easier. And then they've got the, uh, obviously the uh, return spring here that returns the hook part to center um, when you're playing around with those. And then again, you just look from the bottom here at any of the details. There's not a lot of uh, modeling detail down here below. It's all more from the side that it looks great. Um, but you've got your Bachman logo down here, and then you've got your part number there stamped in white. And then you've got your various access screws so that you can uh, dismantle it for whatever reason. Um, and then you've also got a dismantling or a screw here to take off the couplers and either replace them, repair them, or switch them out for another type of coupler. So yeah, there's a look from the bottom. Okay, so now we have the GW or Great Western box van up on the track here. Um, as we said before, this is the exact same molding as a soda or fruit and vegetable car, so we don't need to look at it in any great detail. We'll just give it a spin so that you can see, um, you know, the details on this one and then some of the graphics, the GW. We've got the, you know, the van uh, number and then we have the weight, 12 tons, and then um, what looks like a T, so that would be tear 711. I'm not sure exactly what that would stand for, but um, again, just a little detail here that, um, you know, that just um, enhances the 
the piece of rolling stock here. So let's give it a quick spin so you can see it from all angles. All right, there you have it. You've got Bachmann's G-Scale Toby the Tram engine from the Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends universe and the two box vans that he'll be um, hauling out on the layout. So um, yeah, so let's get out on the layout and have Toby give the box vans a haul. Thank you. 